strongholds, and places for the devil. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 6 For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing unto captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Strongholds are defensive structures that protect people or something from attack or defeat. The Bible talks about the name of the Lord being a strong tower into which the righteous runs and is safe. There are also strongholds of darkness, which gives the devil an advantage over people's lives. These strongholds of Satan are the focus of today's message. There are several ways the devil tries to build strongholds in people's lives. Strongholds are real, and this is an area in the Bible that the church does not speak enough about. Strongholds are real. I have struggled with them in my own life, and I am sure you have too. And the worst thing about strongholds is that they grow. They always grow. Strongholds grow. They are like roots. Have you ever seen a root take shape and form in people's lives? Roots dig down deep. Roots go into the ground and tangle roots embedded into the soil, and that is exactly what strongholds do. One stronghold gives birth to another, and then another stronghold, and then another stronghold. A perfect example is the sin of fornication. A person begins with a problem of lust, and then lust leads to another stronghold, the stronghold of watching pornography. And then the person begins to fornicate, and refuses to exercise self-control and discipline their flesh, and fornication becomes a stronghold in their life. Fornication becomes a real stronghold in their life. Years pass as they continue to fornicate, and that stronghold of fornication continues to grow and grow. That root of fornication continues to get deeper and deeper, and then eventually they get married, and the stronghold of fornication becomes adultery. Don't lie to yourself and think once you get married, you will be able to stop bed hopping. You don't magically get self-control from entering marriage. Now, the stronghold of fornication creates another stronghold of adultery. And the stronghold of adultery creates another stronghold, the stronghold of lies and deception. Because to commit adultery, you have to hide it. So the person starts lying about their whereabouts, who they are with, where they are going who they are texting. Do you see how one stronghold creates other strongholds? From lust to pornography, to fornication to adultery, to lies and deception. One stronghold opens the door to other strongholds. And we know no one is perfect, but it is important to be honest with yourself. What strongholds do you have in your life? 1 John 1 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and His Word is not in us. Be honest with yourself and review your life. I am not saying stand up on the rooftop and declare to everyone I have a problem with alcohol, or I have a problem with lying, or I have a problem with adultery or porn, or I have a problem with stealing. No, you don't have to declare it to the world, but be honest with yourself and examine your life and acknowledge that you have a problem in this area and then go to God. Put that area forward to Him. Ultimately, salvation is not between you and your wife. Salvation is not your relationship with you and the local pastor. No, salvation is your relationship with God. Approach the throne of God. Ask for Him to help you with the stronghold in your life. Don't protect strongholds for the devil. Don't accept a stronghold of sin in your life. Ephesians 4, 17 and 18 reads, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. 
Paul had earlier prayed for the Ephesian believers, that the eyes of their understanding should be opened. He knew that understanding brings spiritual illumination that exposes the operation of Satan in believers' lives. Haven't you noticed that the devil thrives more in areas where people's understanding are darkened? He builds his stronghold on people's ignorance and afflicts them because they lack understanding. Some believers think it's God's responsibility to resist the devil in their lives, but that's ignorance. If you don't take responsibility to resist the devil over your marriage, your business, your ministry, your health, and your life, he will build a stronghold on your ignorance. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Take accountability. You have to submit yourself to God. You have to resist the devil. This passage didn't say that God is going to resist the devil for you. It is your responsibility to resist him. It's our responsibility to be warriors for Christ, to tear down spiritual strongholds and fight the spiritual battles here on earth using the weapons God has given us. The devil most easily builds his strongholds on a sinful life. Anyone who has struggled with addictions, such as masturbation, smoking, drinking, fornication, stealing, lying, and other sins, knows that sin is indeed a great stronghold. Sin mesmerizes people. It takes them hostage and makes it difficult for them to live righteously. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You and I, we all have the sin which doth so easily beset us, and you need to know what that sin is for you, because that sin for me could be different from yours. You need to be aware of it. So the devil takes advantage of the sins that do so easily beset people to build a stronghold of addiction in their lives. Meanwhile, there are no physical formulas that can help to destroy a spiritual stronghold. That is the reason the Bible says, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Has the devil built a stronghold of sin in your life, and you are struggling to be free? You can't prevail by your physical strength or resolutions. You need to turn over to Christ who will supply you with the necessary strength to enforce your victory. Ephesians 6, 10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord, not yourself. Be strong in the Lord and not your willpower. Be strong in the Lord and not your IQ. Be strong in the Lord and not your mental fortitude. Strongholds are not only sin-related, but strongholds can also be products of negative mindsets, which have been built in people's minds over a long period of time. They are ideologies, opinions, and philosophies that do not line up with the truth of God's Word. Satan uses these ideologies to keep us from accessing God's full blessings for our lives. No believer can be better than the quality of his or her mindset. 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us that to pull down satanic strongholds, we must learn to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God in our lives. More so, we are to bring every thought into captivity until they are subjected to obey Christ. Both imaginations and thoughts are products of our mindsets, and if we don't learn to align the truth of God's Word, our minds will become the devil's stronghold. He will use our wrong ideas to work against us and to deprive us of God's fullest life for us. Ephesians 6, 12 and 13 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The provisions for our victory against the devil 
is the whole armor of God. We can pull down the stronghold of darkness when we kid ourselves up with the divine provisions of God's armor. Don't make your life a good place for the devil to operate. Let the Word of God shape your ideology. Refuse to be ignorant and run away from sin. Then you can resist the devil.